Wow, 2019 was a great year for movies. Though I haven't seen many movies this year as I wish I could, the ones I did get to see were pretty amazing. All the movies I feel are Oscar worthy, even if they may get overlooked. Some of the best acted, well-paced movies I have seen in recent years. This is Ethan Butler, and these are my five favorite movies of 2019. Let me start off with a few honorable mentions. These are movies that I really didn't like that much, but I think they are good films and worth mentioning, even if they didn't really hit me with, on a personal level. Let me start off with The Irishman. While this has been marked as one of the best movies of the year and even one of the best of Scorsese's works, I didn't completely love The Irishman. While everything points to me liking it, it's well shot, great actors, great cast, great story, I wasn't totally invested in this story. It didn't interest me as much as I wish it did. The characters are intriguing, but I had a hard time relating to them, unlike most Scorsese characters. This was a very well-made movie with great shots and angles, and it's miraculously paced. I mean, it's three and a half hours long, but it never once feels like that. It feels more like two and a half. So it moves really well, but and Pacino shines in the movie and he really deserves an Oscar for his performance. Joe Pesci was good. He didn't really stand out to me, but he was also good in it. Robert De Niro gives one of the best performances he's had in years. So why didn't this really connect with me? It was just, it was the story. I didn't really get into it. I didn't really pay attention enough to really Put myself in these situations i couldn't really connect with the movie it wasn't that memorable to me it's good it just personally i didn't love it next is ad astra i really didn't love this movie like at all i actually forgot i even saw it for like a for a while it wasn't horrible or anything it just didn't connect with me i it, i also just didn't feel much emotion watching it i listed it because i feel there are two things really worth talking about despite its pacing flaws. Brad Pitt's performance in the visual effects. Brad Pitt is able to really create a compelling character in Roy McBride by really getting into it. He just, he's very quiet. And I really think he did a really great job in here. The visual effects make the movie absolutely breathtaking and just a joy to look at. This wasn't a really a memorable movie at all, but it was just really well done in its effects. Next is Spider-Man Far From Home. This isn't really a popular opinion. People won't really call this the best of the year. I'm just gonna put it on here because it's just a harmless, fun Marvel movie with a ton of funny lines and entertaining action sequences. It took a safer route than I wish it did, but it's fine with what we got. It was fun enough to overlook those things. Tom Holland was great in it. It was a fun time. It wasn't that amazing of a movie or anything, but it was good enough. Anyway, there are many movies that I haven't seen and probably will see sometimes next year, but I did not get the chance to see them, even though people say they are some of the best of the year already. These movies include Jojo Rabbit, Knives Out, Dolomite Is My Name, Uncut Gems, The Lighthouse, Parasite, The Farewell, John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum, and many, many more. These are just the ones that I have seen this year that I feel are worth mentioning. Anyway, let me talk about my five favorite movies of the year, starting with number five, Marriage Story. I was absolutely surprised at how much I loved this movie. It was such a realistic and confident approach at portraying a divorce. This film is filled with excellent performances that just blew me away. Some of the best acting I've seen in many, many years. I am typically not drawn to these types of movies. The ones that are just shot in a very ambitious way and have amazing performances from amazing actors but fail to leave you with a very strong emotion. And I feel like these are the ones that film lovers are really drawn to and say these are the best of the year and ignore all the blockbuster actual popular movies that people actually talk about. These are the ones that kind of are forgotten over years later. While I love movies, these ones are just very slow moving, kind of emotionless to me and don't really connect with me. But with Marriage Story, that is not the case at all. This is a very powerful film with so many powerful themes in it. I love how you get both perspectives of both characters and they're just viewed equally. 
you get enough screen time with both characters to really feel what they are feeling and it makes it a very impactful movie experience adam driver and scarlett johansson gives some of the best performances i've seen them give and they prove themselves to be some of the best actors of our generation this is a movie that isn't easy to re recreate it has such an interesting story that hooks you in from the very first scene and leaves you satisfied in a way at the very last scene it, i was in tears by the end of this movie but in some way i still felt like it manages to complete itself it moved me in a way that i never expected and it is the best movie i have seen in recent years number four is ford v ferrari this is one of the most fun theater experiences i've had in a long time it was a blast from start to finish the performances from matt damon and christian bale were magnificent especially christian bale he was amazing in this the on-screen chemistry was just absolutely magnetic christian bale proves himself once again that he can become a character almost flawlessly james mangold also proves himself to be one of the most reliable directors in the past few years this film is wonderfully shot and all the race sequences are just so breathtaking they're shot in a way that the audience can tell what's going on they made use of their budget and it just totally paid off it looks fantastic there isn't a shot in here that i felt didn't blow me away it also is a very funny movie surprisingly it made me laugh and made me smile but it also doesn't shy away from expressing strong emotions the comedy managed to get us so invested in the characters that when something bad happened to them we could feel the emotions that they could feel this is such a fun breath of fresh air that i was will be able to re-watch for a long time Number three is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I can understand why this wasn't loved by many people. It doesn't move at a rapid pace or anything. It takes its time to build things up and it manages to be amazingly funny and entertaining at the same time. There are a lot of inside jokes though and that's why I feel like some people may not have liked it that much because it has a lot of references to things that some people just may not understand or be able to connect to. Like I said before, I love movies. I love old movies, I love the classics, and I just love 1960s movies. And so the world of 60s Hollywood that Tarantino brought to screen was just an absolute joy to watch for me. It has so many references that some people may not understand, which totally makes sense as to why some people may not like this movie as much as I did. The characters are just so fun to watch. And Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt give some of the best performances I've seen them give in many, many years. I think this is the most likable I've ever seen DiCaprio in a movie. This is a beautifully shot film that's just so fun to watch, especially the scenes where they're driving through Hollywood at night. It looks great. It's also surprisingly sweet when it wants to be. It just has this likability and charm to it that just isn't common in most Tarantino films. I'm not a huge fan of Tarantino movies. I didn't really like Reservoir Dogs or Inglorious Bastards as much as I wish I did. They just weren't really my thing. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood totally delivered for me. Characters are actually decent kind of good people which isn't really common in most tarantino films they genuinely care about each other and they have this sort of innocence to them which kind of gives you this joy to watch what the world was back then the simplicity of it margot robbie as sharon tate was just so fun to watch though she didn't have much to do in the movie she had this kind of innocence and charm to her character that made her very likable the ending was such a fun surprise and just left me with a smile on my face. This is a movie that comes once in a lifetime and should be watched by those who love movies and are interested in the history of Hollywood films. I give so much credit to Tarantino for giving us such a funny, pleasing, and sweet movie that celebrates 1960s Hollywood in a bright, colorful, and original way. Now I'm going to go to my number two, which is Rocket Man. I remember seeing the first couple of trailers for this film and remembering how it just kind of looked down to me. Especially after Bohemian Rhapsody just came out, I feel like it was kind of a cheap move. But this really surprised me. I had no idea how good this movie was going to be. It's now a personal all-time favorite of mine. It's honestly way better than Bohemian Rhapsody was due to the fact that it actually takes its time to tell its story. This is a wonderfully paced movie that used Elton John's songs to tell his life story in a musical fantasy sort of a way, and it makes it very creative and fun. I was also blown away by Taron Egerton's Oscar-worthy performance as Elton John. He managed to do a semi-impersonation of this man, but also humanized him. You could really feel his losses, you could feel his pain, and you could understand why he made the bad choices that he did. And by doing that, it made it a lot more fulfilling when his redemption came around. The soundtrack is so fun to listen to, the musical sequences are just such a joy to watch, and it's beautifully directed by Dexter Fletcher with a ton of heart and emotion to it. 
it gives us such an entertaining and creative way to tell a man's real life story. This one will always hold a special place in my heart for many years to come, but it wasn't as good as my number one pick. Number one is Avengers Endgame. This probably isn't a surprise. This movie continues to blow me away in how confident it is in its storytelling, but also made us realize how emotionally invested we really are in these characters that they built up for all these years. Marvel made many, many films to develop these characters so we were able to gain a connection to them. This way, we got to feel their loss. We got to see them be human rather than the gods that they are perceived to be. This film is just an experience. Experience. It's hard to explain it to words. This film took major risks. Each act improves upon the last while feeling different from the last in a good way. This movie is a film about people. It's about people grieving, which led to some of the best acting I've seen in the entire series, mostly due to the fact that the actors have been playing these characters for so many years. By far, my favorite part was really seeing all the original adventures all together again, seeing the characters interact on screen one last time. I love seeing Steve and Tony reunite and have closure. I love Tony seeing his father again, Thor seeing his mother, and most importantly, Steve getting the ending that he always deserved. They had these little heartwarming, sometimes hilarious moments that I couldn't help but smile during, and it manages to give a good dose of comedy in the second act, which also made it one of the funniest Marvel movies. The third act was easily my favorite part with the final battle sequence that led to some of the most iconic movie scenes that made it an instant classic. This film did everything I wanted it to and so much more. The performances were spectacular, the action was phenomenal, and the ending was one of the best that I have ever seen. The way they wrapped everything up, the way these original characters were sent off, and the way that they gave closure to the story was one of the best ever put to film. I enjoy this movie every time I see it. It's an extremely emotional, tear-jerking film, but I feel the most important aspect of it are the heartwarming and tender moments between these beloved characters that we've gotten to know over the past years. I'm still blown away at how this film did something different while giving us a very satisfying conclusion Conclusion to a gigantic franchise. All my respect goes to the Russo brothers on this film. And those are my favorite movies of 2019. I know there are so many that I haven't seen and I'm planning to see them. Um, they're all really loved movies and I just never got the chance to see them. And yes, I did see The Rise of Skywalker, but I personally didn't really like it very much. So I didn't even like want to put it on this list. I didn't even want to list it as an honorable mention. So I, I didn't put it on the list. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know what your favorite movies of 2019 are in the comments below. And subscribe to this channel if you like seeing content like this. This is Ethan Butler and I'm out.